So hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss in particular regarding jejunum and ileum from small intestine. Already we have discussed regarding the general features of small intestine and duodenum in previous videos. In continuation now it is jejunum and ileum. So we all know here from the cardiac end and this is filary end of stomach and from here duodenum is arising and it forms the uh, there are four parts in the duodenum and uh, now this uh, duodenum is the most affected part of the small intestine and now it comes the jejunum and ileum which is the most mobile part and it is attached to the mesentery. So it is freely mobile. So this jejunum forms the upper and left part of the small intestine. Here this part is formed completely by jejunum and lower and right side of the abdomen is formed by the ileum. And we all know the small intestine is almost 6 meters long. Here we will be discussing regarding jejunum and ileum in a comparative way because both these parts of small intestine share the general features in very common. So first regarding the walls of jejunum and ileum. So if we are talking regarding the walls, jejunum is having thick wall. And ileum is having Like thick wall we can see in case of jejunum and in case of ileum we can see only thin wall. And if we are rega discussing regarding the vascularity, here because of the thickness we will be seeing more vascularity. Here there will be comparatively less vascularity. Now let's see regarding the lumen. Hollowness inside the organ. So, so here lumen is very wide. Like wideness will be very more. So if there is wide lumen surely the part of the small intestine would be empty only. So here in case of ileum, the lumen is also very narrow. So it is always loaded. You can remember like this, if, it, if anything is wide, it would be remaining empty and if it is narrow, it would be loaded. Then regarding the mesentery, mesentery is nothing but the attachment of peritoneal membrane. So here in case of mesentery, we can see very less amount of fat in the jejunum. And here we can see more amount of fat comparing to jejunum. So this is the first three common features regarding jejunum and ileum. Here regarding the walls, jejunum is having thick wall and high vascularity and ileum is having thin wall and low vascularity. And regarding the lumen, it is very wide. So it is always empty and it is very narrow. So there, so there won't be passage of uh, um, solid contents. So it will be all remain loaded. And regarding the mesentery, it is very having very less amount of fat and it is having more amount of fat. So now regarding the internal features of small intestine, in that previous video we had seen regarding the mucosal folds also. So let us discuss regarding that in detail which is relevant to each and every part of small intestine. So first thing which we are going to discuss is regarding the circular mucosal folds. In that video we had seen that this circular mucosal folds mainly extends from the second part of duodenum and it will become large in the end of jejunum and after that it will become sparse and the same thing here also. So in case of jejunum, uh, the circular mucosal folds will be very large and prominent. And already we had seen that the circular mucosal folds nearly increases the surface area up to 8 times. And uh, in case of ileum, we can see small and sparse folds. It won't be very clear also that we can see in case of ileum. So next regarding the villus. We had already seen regarding the villus and microvillus. So in case of jejunum, it is very large thick and more. This villus would be very large, size is also very large and it is very thick and it is abundant. Abundant, okay. Large, thick and abundant and in case of ileum, it is very short, thin and very less in number, okay. Very, this is very thin like this and it is less in number, okay. This is regarding the villi and microvilli. Now regarding the lymphatic follicles present in the jejunum and ileum. So now, we are going to discuss regarding the lymphatic follicles present in both jejunum and ileum. There are two different types. One is solitary and another one is aggregated. This aggregated lymphatic follicles are also called as Payer's patches which is having its own clinical significance that we will be discussing later. So in case of solitary lymphatic follicles in jejunum, we will be having only fever that is small in numbers. And in case of ileum, we will be having numerous solitary lymphatic follicles. And already we know the Payer's patches are oval in shape. And in case of uh, jejunum, there is no various patches and in case of ileum we will be having various patches and the clinical significance of various patches is mainly whenever there is typhoid infection there will be inflammation of various patches inflammation of various patches we can see and in another one condition mainly during weaning period of pediatric age group 
there will be inflammation of this phase patches leading to intersusception and or intestinal obstruction. So, this phase patches plays a major role in case of both these conditions. Now, at last, we are going to discuss regarding the histology. So, in case of jejunum, the villi will be tongue shaped and we are already know that uh, this villi is very thick and uh, very abundant in jejunum and here in case of uh, ileum the villi will be finger like projections and it is very thin okay this is how the villi looks in case of ileum and then then comes the mucous membrane that is submucous membrane here there will be no glands in case of submucous area and here in case of ileum this is the submucous area and we will be having our payers patches in the submucous area okay here comes our payers patches and now, the next layers were muscularis externum. This will be similar in both the condition. It won't be having any particular or special features. And at last, comes our serosa layer, which is the outermost layer. Okay. So, this is how the histology of jejunum and ileum looks like. So, let me explain you. Here, in case of jejunum, the villus will be tongue shaped and very numerous in number. And uh, submucosa layer won't be having no glands, won't be having any glands. And this muscularis externa and this serosa layer looks normal. There is no in, in, there is no special features. And in case of uh, ileum, the villus will be very thin. And this submucosa layer will be having payers patches. And as usual, this muscularis external layer and serosa layer should, will be looking very normal. There is no additional features. So now let us discuss regarding the blood supply of jejunum and ileum. So here comes the superior mesenteric artery which is the branch of abdominal aorta superior mesenteric artery which forms the major blood supply of jejunum and ileum and the same way the venous drainage is through superior mesenteric vein and here in case of lymphatics and here in case of lymphatic drainage lymph nodes present along the superior mesenteric artery receives all the lymphs and drains directly into the lymph node which is present in front of the abdominal iota. So, this is the lymphatic drainage and regarding the nerve supply. So, regarding the nerve supply of jejunum and ileum, the sympath sympathetic nerve supply is through T9 and T11 and parasympathetic is through vagus and this is all regarding the jejunum and ileum. So, let's give a quick recap. So, we are talking regarding the small intestine which is 6 meter in long in length and here there are 3 parts that is duodenum, jejunum and ileum. So, this duodenum is the most fixed part and jejunum and ileum is the freely mobile part. So, exactly regarding jejunum and ileum, walls of the jejunum are very thick and high vascular and ileum is very thin and low vascularity will be there and in case of lumen, jejunum will be having the wide lumen so it, is, it remains always empty and ileum will be narrowed and it is always loaded and regarding the mesentery, there will be less fat in case of jejunum and more fat in case of ileum and regarding the internal features, we had already discussed in the general feature video regarding the circular mus mucosal folds, villi and microvilli. This circular mucosal folds mainly helps in increasing the surface area of small intestine and it arises from the second part of duodenum and it ends mainly in the jejunum where it becomes very large and after that in case of ileum, it will become small and fat and in case of villi and microvilli here uh, villi in jejunum is very thick and very large and it is also abundant and in case of ileum it is very thin and it is very less in number and regarding the lymphatics there are two different types of lymphatics that is solitary and aggregated so, aggregated is also called as payers patches solitary is very few in case of jejunum and numerous in case of ileum and regarding the payers patches there is no or absent payers patches in the jejunum and there will be more payers patches in case of ileum and this payers patches have its own clinical significance whenever there is any typhoid infection that will lead to inflammation of Various patches and during the weaning period there will be inflammation which is leading to intestinal obstruction in pediatric age group and regarding the histology so histology we here we can see villi which is very um, um which is very large and tongue shaped already we had seen it is very thick and regarding the submucous layer there is no glands and there will be no changes in muscularis externa and serosa layer and in case of uh, jejunum the villi will be very thin and numerous and in case of submucosal layer we will be having various patches and muscularis externa and serosa looks normal and in case of blood supply, it is mainly through superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric vein and lymphatic drainage is through the lymph nodes present along the superior mesenteric artery which drains in the lymph node which is present in the front of the abdominal iota and regarding the nerve supply, sympathetic nerve supply is through T9 and T11 and parasympathetic is through vagus. So, if you have any doubt regarding how the stimulations and nerve supply is happening, you just check out the duodenum video. That would be easy for you to understand and thank you so much all.